Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see about clouds. So this clouds it is one of the important topic, and you can expect uh, especially films based questions. And even we are going to discuss about cloud seeding topic at last. So that will be important from your current fights, and you can get a main question from that cloud seeding because it is seen highly in news. Okay. So if you are talking about clouds, so you might have saw about clouds even in your childhood, right? So in rainy season, so especially, I can recall one event. So I used to see at clouds, okay, mainly to to make absent for the schools, okay. Just I want to play in the rain. So at that time, I used to see at the sky, and I would be seeing about clouds when they will come. so whether it is dark color clouds or whether it is white color clouds at that time i don't know what is the meaning of uh, white color clouds and uh, black color clouds and even i used to uh, stare at the sky during evening times and i used to watch like so how the shape of this clouds it is uh, changing and i can see the different types of clouds sometimes the clouds are like if you see okay so if you see the distance sometimes i can see like clouds or touching the ground and i can see some feather feather type of clouds are there and some are like cotton balls of types so at that time i don't know what why these are the different types of shapes of clouds but now i am teaching about that clouds here so now if you are talking about clouds so what is the meaning of cloud cloud it is nothing but it is a mass of minute white water droplets so it is nothing but minute water droplets for tiny crystals of ice which mainly formed by condensation of water vapor in free air at considerable elevations that is considerable height then what happened so to understand this i will be giving you a small example so let us consider this as our earth surface so we have sun here sun is our hero so without sun we can't explain this geography right so sun is our hero so here we have sun so from sun we will be getting insulation so because of this this earth surface will be absorbing that heat and it will be becoming hot so we can see high temperature will be there so high temperature means normally we can see there is a low pressure right so let us take this is as a sea surface let us take this is as a surface of sea so on the surface of sea also we are getting same insulation right it will be also getting heat so what happen whenever water get heated we will be, that water will be converted into vapor so this is the concept that you know so whenever water is converting into vapor means that will be becoming very very light and it have the tendency to move upset or to rise so you can see this vapor whenever you are heating a you heat you are taking a beaker full of water and if you are heating this water then what happen after once the water get heated this vapor will be moving upside if you place a lid here so what happen this water vapor that will be touching this cool lid and we can see water droplets will be there so we have to apply the same phenomena here so the water which is mainly get heated or get warm so that will be touching some dust particles which are present in our atmosphere so after reaching certain height they will be touching this dust particles so after touching this dust particles they will be of like cool okay the temperature will be comparatively cool so after touching this cool surface they will be get condensed right so after condensing what happen they will be forming a cloud so this is a phenomena this is very simple right so here cloud it is a mass of minute water droplets or the crystal of ice which mainly formed by condensation of water vapor in free air so in high, in air especially at some elevation at some height from the earth surface we can say these clouds are formed as the clouds are formed at some height over the surface of the earth okay they take several shapes because there will be the winds they are moving not only at the surface of the earth but also at the different layers right so based on the different altitude different height so there are different shapes of clouds will be there so according to the height according to expanse of those clouds and density transparency or opaqueness we can see there will be the different types of clouds so based on height expanse density transparency and opaqueness we are mainly grouping these clouds into four types so first one is cirrus clouds 
second one is cumulus clouds and third one is stratus clouds and fourth one is nimbus so there are four types of clouds cirrus cumulus stratus and as well as nimbus so you have to make a note so now let us try to see the image so if you see i can imagine i used to also watch this type of clouds actually here my grandfather should used to be there beside me so especially when i when i goes to my grandfather village during summer or some festivals and i used to watch the sky actually in village so at that time i used to see this type of cirrus clouds cumulus clouds alto cumulus cumulus nimbus stratus but i don't know i didn't have that much day to ask my grandfather like so why these clouds are in these shapes okay and if i ask i don't know what my grandfather used to say but i didn't have that much day to ask why this is in this shape or that shape so if you're talking about the types of clouds you can see different types here so here we can see feathery feathery types of clouds this is called as cirrus and this is cumulus okay that is cirro cumulus and here you can see alto cumulus cumulo nimbus and stratus so now let us try to see one by one in a great detail so first let us try to understand what is a cirrus clouds actually these clouds that you can see at a very very high altitudes like 8 kilometers to 12 kilometers so between 8 kilometers to 12 kilometers in such a great height we can see this cirrus cloud and these clouds are normally very very thin so here you can see the image so these are very very thin and you can see like feathery appearance and normally this type of clouds they are white in color they are pure white in color so this is cirrus clouds and if you see next one is cumulus clouds so cumulus clouds are nothing but they are cotton wool type so if you see this image you can see they are wool type and normally they are mainly found at 4 to 7 kilometers height and they exist as patches so here one patch is there and here one patch is there and they can be seen like they are scattered here and there and actually they have flat base so they will be like this okay so they will be having flat base so this is about cumulus and next one is stratus so if we're talking about stratus the name which mainly says that they are layered clouds which are mainly covering a large portion of sky so these stratus are nothing but layered clouds and they are mainly mainly covering large areas of sky and these clouds are generally formed either due to loss of heat or mixing of air masses so regarding this air masses we are going to study in our next lecture so because in air masses we will be having fronts so we have to study about fronts like occluded front cold front warm front so at that time you have to study about different types of clouds which are mainly formed there so if you unless and until know about different clouds then you can understand so there are different clouds that are mainly formed in that warm front cold front or occluded front so because of that i am dealing with this cloud topic first and later on we are going to discuss about that air masses front topic in the next topic in the next lecture that's okay so here the name which mainly says that stratus means nothing but they are layered clouds and they are mainly covering a large portion of our sky and these clouds they are generally formed either because of loss of heat or whenever two air masses air masses means nothing but so the air which is having the same properties like density temperature okay whenever air masses like cold air mass and as well as warm air mass are mixing together so at that time that will also leads to formation of this type of clouds especially we can see stratus clouds there right and nimbus nimbus means nothing but sometimes you can see the clouds are black in color or dark gray in color so if you see whenever the clouds are black or gray in color so your parents or your grandparents might be saying that clouds are black in color yes it may rain you have you should not go outside for playing so like that thing i think everyone they might have heard about this clouds are black or gray so you should not go out it may rain right so here nimbus clouds are normally black or gray in color and they form at a middle levels or very near to surface of the earth and if you are talking about this nimbus clouds they are very much dense they are extremely dense and they are also opaque so why they are dark in color because the light which is coming from the sun that will not penetrating into this 
okay so because of that we can see this is a black or gray in color so whenever dark or gray in color means that cloud which is entirely saturated with the water okay so sometimes the clouds are also so low that that seems to touch the ground so these nimbus clouds are normally shapeless and we can see there are thick masses of vapor that is mainly seen in these clouds and if you are talking about the process of cloud formation so how these clouds are formed so clouds form when invisible water vapor in the air which mainly condenses into visible water droplets or ice crystals so normally if i ask you one question so can you see the water vapor which is present around you no i can't right so but if you see whenever this water vapor which is condensed which is condensed you can see the visible droplets so how so for example let us take let us take an example for example you are taking a beaker and you are taking water in that beaker and you started heating this beaker full of water and if you see after some time the water will be boiling and the water vapor which is mainly moving upside so normally you can see white color smoke that is moving upside so in some cases you can see very very light right but it, that is nothing but your water vapor there you can't see water vapor but you are placing a lid for example let us take beaker is here and you are placing a lid at some height so after some time you, if you remove that lid and if you see there will be the water vapor uh, water droplets that will be there here on this lid so here clouds they are mainly formed when invisible water vapor that is present in our air and this water vapor condenses into visible water droplets or ice crystals so there is water around us all the time in the form of tiny gas particles and this water which is present all the time around us it is called as water vapor so there are also very tiny particles which are floating in our air for example we have different types of salts and as well as dust which is mainly present or suspended in our air so those salt and as well as dust which is mainly floating or suspended in our air they are called as aerosols so what happen whenever this water vapor which is mainly touching that aerosols then what happen these water vapor and these particles they are mainly colliding so normally these uh, these dust or salt will be in the cool compared to that of this water vapor whenever this hot water vapor that is coming and attaching to this or colliding with this salt or this dust particles then that will leads to the condensation right so after condensation what happen the bigger water droplets they will be on they will be normally forming so after after a small water particle that mainly condensed and if there is another water particle condensed they will be come together and they will be attaching so that the water bigger water droplets which mainly form around this aerosol particles and these water droplets they start sticking to each other okay and finally that will lead to the formation of clouds and clouds form when air which is saturated and cannot hold any more water vapor okay clouds when they will form means so this will become saturated and it can it cannot hold even a more than one droplet of water okay so amount of water in air has increased okay whenever there is high rate of evaporation we can see this clouds will be formed at a faster rate and even whenever the air which is cool at a dew point that means that means what happened the condensation which mainly occurs okay there is 100% saturation which mainly happened so because of this 100% saturation which mainly happened it is unable to hold any more water okay so in these two conditions we can see clouds okay clouds which is mainly formed so clouds are usually produced through condensation as air rises it will be cooled and it will mainly reduce the temperature of air okay and finally it will leads to precipitation after 100% saturation so what causes clouds to form there are five important factors that will lead to formation of this clouds first one is surface heating second one is orographic barrier fronts convergence and turbulence so these are the five important factors that will lead to air to rise and to cool and finally to form this clouds so now let us try to see one by one so first let us try to see this surface heating 
So we're talking about the surface heating. So this happens when the ground is heated by sun, when heats the air in contact with it, which mainly causes to rise. For example, let us take this is as our edge surface. On edge surface, whenever we are getting insulation from the sun, so this land will be get heated. And whenever the air which is coming in contact with the surface of earth, because of this high temperature, so this air will also get heated. So as you know that whenever air get heated, it will be becoming warmer. So whenever air become warmer means air will have capability to expand. So whenever it is expanding, it will become light. So this light air will, will mainly rise up. So whenever this light air it is rising up, whatever the water vapor that is present in that region, that will be also carried up. And finally, after reaching certain height, the condensation process will be happening and finally that will lead to formation of clouds. So the rising columns, they are called as thermals and surface heating tends to produce cumulus clouds. So because of the surface heating, that will lead to formation of this cumulus clouds. That means this type of clouds which are mainly formed because of this surface heating. So they are like cotton balls, right? And next one is topographic or orographic forcing. So the topography or the shape or and features of area, they can also cause the clouds to form, okay? For example, let us take this is a mountain or a hill. So whenever the air which is moving in this direction, so it is carrying some amount of moisture with that. So whenever this air which is mainly raising along the slope of this mountain means, so it will be, it will be reaching the height. So after with the height, we can see due to this normal lapse that there is decreasing of temperature. So because of this, we can see condensation and that will be also forming this clouds. So because of this topography or orographic forcing, we can see the formation of clouds which is mainly seen. When air is forced to rise over the barrier of mountain or hills, then the cool air, okay, so after this warm air which is mainly rising up, so it will be cool and often that will lead to formation of clouds. And next one is fronds. So fronds it is nothing but the transitional zone between the two different air masses, right? So clouds are formed when the mass of warm air which mainly raises up over the mass of cold air. So in the next lecture, we are going to talk in detail regarding frontogenesis, frontolysis, different types of fronts. There you can see cumulonimbus uh, and as well as altostrators, nimbus clouds, everything will be seen there. So as of now, we have to remember, whenever this cold air mass and warm air mass are meeting, so cold air mass will be very heavy. So we will be having high pressure. Whenever it is coming and hitting, so this warm air will be moving upside. So whenever this warm air which is moving upside, which is having moisture, so whenever it is moving upside, that will lead to formation of clouds. So whenever the fronts are seen, that will also lead to the formation of front. So front, it is nothing but transition zone, or I can say it is a boundary between warm, moist air and as well as cool, drier air. So warm air will be moisture because it will be having water vapor and this cool air will be drier because it do not have water vapor and next one is convergence so streams of air which is mainly flowing from different directions whenever they are forced to rise then that will also leads to formation of cumulus clouds so this is convergence is nothing but whenever two air mass which are coming and hitting together then this warm air this will be moving upside and it will be forming clouds right and next one is turbulence so because of sudden change in the wind speed with height that will also lead to formation of these clouds, okay? So these are the some important factors that led to formation of clouds. And now let us try to talk about types of clouds. So in these types of clouds, we will be talking about different names. So try to remember those names and try to remember the important features of that clouds. So that will be very important. So we are talking about the names for the clouds. As usually, so we are having some combination of prefixes and suffixes. So we are having stratus or strato. Stratus means something but flat, layered or smooth. Flat or layered and smooth, that is stratus. And cumulus or cumulo means heaped up. We can say fluffy and we can see like cauliflower or cotton ball. 
एंड इसमें सिरस और सिरो मीन्स हाई और वी कैन सी विस्पी आल्टो मीन्स मीडियम लेवल निम्बस मीन्स रेन बेरिंग क्राउड यू हैव टू रिमेंबर स्टेटस इज नथिंग बट फ्लैट इट विल बी लाइक दिस एंड क्यूमुलस मीन्स इट इज विल बी लाइक कॉटन शेप्ड और कैलीफ्लावर शेप्ड एंड सिरस मीन्स इट विल बी वेरी हाई ओके क्लाउड्स ऑफ formed at very high altitude they are called as cirrus and clouds which are mainly formed at medium height they will be called as alto and nimbus means they are rain bearing clouds okay so these are some prefixes and suffixes that you have to remember for sure yes and if you see the different types of clouds so we can divide them based on height we have high level clouds we have middle level or medium level and next one is low level so in high level as i said we have cirrus clouds it may be cirrus or cirrostratus cirro cumulus okay cirros okay cirrus will be there cirrostratus cirro cumulus and in middle level we have alto stratus alto cumulus stratus means straight cumulus means fluffy and in the low levels we can see cumulus cloud will be there so because of heating of surface we can see cumulus and we can see nimbostratus nimbus means black color clouds they are mainly bearing the rain and stratus means straight clouds and we can also see stratus clouds in the low level and even we can see strato cumulus here we have straight and we have we can see fluffy and we can see cumulo nimbus clouds okay so you have to see in the high level we have cirro cumulus cirrus and cirro stratus medium level we have alto cumulus alto stratus and here at the low level we have stratus will be there nimbo stratus will be there cumulus will be there strato cumulus cumulo nimbus so these are the different types of clouds that we can see and now let us try to see the classification of clouds so high clouds are nothing but cirrus clouds cirro stratus cirro cumulus and middle clouds will be alto stratus and alto cumulus so high means you have to remember the word cirrus middle means you have to remember alto and low clouds means strato cumulus stratus nimbus stratus so we can see stratus clouds are normally seen in low clouds so apart from that we can see the clouds which are of vertical development that is cumulus clouds will be there and cumulo nimbus clouds i hope you understand this classification types of clouds and now let us try to see one more image so if you see this image and if you understand this image the most of this clouds topic will be done so here we have this low clouds so no clouds we are having nimbo stratus we are having stratus cloud that is straight cloud and strato cumulus this flat at bottom and we can see cotton wool type that is present and cumulus means like this okay cumulus is also vertical developed cloud and here at the low level you can see there is a very very tall cloud which is mainly seen so this tall cloud it is nothing but cumulo nimbus cloud so normally this type of clouds are seen in cyclones and this will be causing heavy rainfall because this cloud entirely which is containing water droplets and sometimes we can see ice is also there so it will be causing heavy rainfall but if you see whenever the clouds which are forming in this horizontal landscape means it will be causing heavy rain uh, rainfall in a larger extent but it is not much heavy so it is causing a rainfall in a larger extent but this cumulonimbus clouds they will be causing rainfall in a small area but the rainfall it's very very heavy rainfall and if you're talking about middle clouds we are having alto stratus and as well as alto cumulus right and the next one is our high clouds you can say cirro cumulus cirro stratus and cirrus and here you can see halo development that is seen okay so this halo you can see in this cirro stratus so this will be one important prelims question so now let us try to see these clouds high altitude clouds mid altitude clouds low altitude clouds and vertical clouds in detail so actually these high altitude clouds which are mainly found 2000 20000 feet or higher above the land surface okay and we can say cirrus cirro stratus cirro cumulus and middle clouds which are mainly seen at 6500 to 20000 feet and we can see alto stratus alto cumulus and low alto clouds we can see 
these clouds which are about 6500 feet from our ground level so we have stratus strato cumulus and nimbo stratus and vertical clouds we have cumulus and as well as cumulonimbus so these are the clouds which extend from the lower to higher altitudes of our atmosphere and they are mainly caused because of convention as well as frontal lifting so because of this frontal lifting and because of this convention we can see these vertical clouds which mainly form it and these are powerful because they will be causing heavy rainfall and we can also see some foggy clouds will be there so these foggy clouds that we can see they will be seen at the ground level so because of this foggy clouds that will also decrease the visibility okay and in delhi we can see these foggy clouds which mainly formed and now let us try to discuss about these types of clouds like cirrus clouds everything okay so first one it is our cirrus clouds so these are detached clouds they will be like in white in color and we can see delicate filaments or feathery like things that are mainly seen or hairy like or silky sheen appearance which is mainly seen and actually these cirrus clouds are wet, they are at very very height right so as we all know whenever we are increasing we are moving okay above from the sea level or above from the earth surface the temperature will be decreased across this normal lab state correct so as according to this normal lab state for every one kilometer there is decreasing of about 6.5 degree centigrade for example let us see at the ground level we have 30 degree centigrade but if you are moving towards 10 kilometer means we have to remove 60 degree centigrade from this that means we can see minus 40 degree centigrade here right okay so this is normally i am telling you okay so whenever there is a minus temperature when we are going towards upper altitudes then normally these cirrus clouds they will be containing ice crystals okay so one important thing that you have to remember here is in these cirrus clouds they are always composed of ice crystals and their transparent character which mainly depends upon degree of separation of crystals okay these clouds which mainly cross the sun's disk they hardly diminish its brightness so because of this transparentness so this cirrus clouds will not have some impact on the brightness of the sun okay so before sunrise and after sunset cirrus clouds often colored bright yellow or red in color so if you see during sunrise early morning like by 5 30 or 6 you can see the colors different colors like light orange light yellow and sometimes red color is there in our sky it is because of the cirrus clouds and this is the thing which mainly seen during even sunset as well okay so this is uh, this is the image of our cirrus clouds i already showed in our uh, in our uh, starting of this lecture itself and this one is cirrostatus so cirrostatus they are nothing but transparent okay and you have to remember there is a small difference between the cirrus and as well as cirrostatus clouds so here the cirrostatus they are transparent and they are also white in color but they are, they are mainly like whitish veil clouds and they are having a very fibrous or very smooth appearance and the sheet of this cirrostatus they are very extensive and nearly always ends by covering the whole sky so this cirrostatus they are they are appearing like oh, entire our sky which is mainly covering with this cirrostatus so this is one small indifference here okay so the milky veil of fog or thin status which is mainly distinguished from the zero status of similar appearance by halo phenomena so if you are if you are talking about the cirrus clouds they are responsible for this red color or orange or yellow color during sunrise and sunset but here this zero status clouds are responsible for the halo appearance so for example if you say this is the sun so around the sun we can see a dark line will be there so that is called as halo halo which is mainly because of this zero status and next one is zero cumulus so zero cumulus are nothing but they will be thin white patch sheet or layered clouds they are without any shading okay and they composed of very small elements and these are this is about this zero cumulus you can see like grains will be there or ripples there in the sky and next one is alto status we are talking about middle clouds or mid clouds so alto status they are like gray color or bluish cloud sheets and they are normally layers of serrated or fibrous clouds and that totally or partially covers the sky and they are thin enough and we can see like regularly reveal the sun 
as if seen through the ground glass and alto status cloud do not produce any halo phenomena as you all know zero status which is mainly uh, leads to this uh, halo phenomena but this alto status they do not responsible or produces halo phenomena okay so you can see this type of clouds normally right and this one is alto cumulus alto cumulus or nothing but white or gray patch sheet or layered clouds generally they are composed of laminae rounded mass or rolls okay they are they may be partly fibrous or diffuse so cumulus means like in this uh, cotton ball shaped or cauliflower shaped right so we can see they might be in white in color or they might be in the gray in color and we can also see layered clouds will be there okay so with the edge of a thin semi transparent patch we can see in this alto cumulus clouds and this alto cumulus clouds is responsible for corona of moon and as well as sun so corona is nothing but we, can, we already studied about the sun corona and we can see sometimes around the sun we can see like one ring will be appear inside that ring we can see dark blue in color so that is the responsible uh, that is mainly because of this alto cumulus clouds so if you see this image you can see in the night times especially not during the sun so sun will also appear like this but we might not watch about the sun regard in this position but in 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 moon in the night during night you can see this type of image okay i also saw this image number of times when we used to sleep on terrace during the summer season especially so this type of phenomenon is mainly because of this alto cumulus so you have to remember this zero status clouds which are responsible for the halo and here this alto cumulus clouds is responsible for this corona of sun and moon right so these are this alto cumulus clouds and next one is nimbo status now we are discussing about this low clouds right so this nimbo status clouds they are responsible for the continuous rain so they are also called as rain ba rain bearing clouds they are mainly resulting from thickening of this alto status and they are dark gray color clouds actually and these clouds which mainly base uh, lowers to low level of clouds as precipitation continues so here we can see they will be appear like very much near to the edge surface and they are responsible for the rainfall actually so you can see this type of cloud so this cloud it is our nimbo status cloud and next one is strato cumulus clouds and we can see sometimes gray or whitish patches or sheets or layered clouds that will be there in the sky and it will be appear like a honeycomb appearance okay so this type of clouds you can see like this right so these clouds are called as nimbo cumulus clouds and it's one is stratus clouds so these stratus clouds are generally gray color okay they are generally in green color and they will be having a uniform base which may if even thick enough and they will produce some drizzle and even they will be having ice prisms or snow grains okay so these are nothing but our status clouds okay so this is the image of our status cloud okay next one is cumulus so cumulus it is mainly detached generally it is like a dense cloud okay cumulus it is a detached cloud and generally it is a dense cloud and we can see some sharp outlines of this cloud and normally it will appear as like a cauliflower and we can see some of these clouds are brilliant white in color and some of them are having some dark or horizontal blaze so this is the image of that cumulus cloud and next one is cumulonimbus so cumulonimbus cloud it is a very very vertical cloud and it is a very like it will be spreading from here to till our high altitudes from the low levels to the towards high altitudes so the thunder it is also called as thunderstorm cloud it is a very very heavy and dense cloud so whenever we are studying about the cyclones there we can study about this uh, cumulonimbus cloud in a very great detail actually this cumulonimbus clouds we can also see hail sometimes like ice ice will be falling right during sometimes when we are getting rainfall during the summer season so it is mainly because of this cumulonimbus clouds and actually the upper portion of this uh, cumulonimbus cloud it is usually smooth and fibrous or striated and it also nearly always flat in the shape okay that we can see here right and this cloud it is often very dark and it will cause heavy or intense rainfall and it will also produce the hail and as well as tornadoes as well so if you say this is the image so here we can see this this is the 
cumulonimbus cloud that mainly formed and this is about types of clouds and now let us try to discuss about one important topic that is cloud seeding so this topic is highly seen in current affairs so you have to understand what is this cloud seeding so cloud seeding is nothing but it is an artificial way we are mainly inducing this moisture in the clouds so that it will leads to rainfall so it is an artificial method okay for rainfall so cloud seeding it is an artificial way we are mainly focusing to induce moisture in the clouds so that it will cause rainfall okay so it is mainly done by using some chemicals like either dry ice or silver iodide aerosols they will be sprayed in the upper parts of our clouds because yes whenever we want to go for condensation dust particles are very much necessary so if there is no proper dust particles or salt which is available means there will be no condensation and there will be no rainfall so for that they are mainly spraying this dry ice or the silver iodide aerosols in the upper parts of our clouds so actually this cloud seeding methods will be done through three important methods so the important methods of this cloud seeding or the first one is hygroscopic cloud seeding so in this hygroscopic uh, cloud seeding so we are mainly dispersing the salts through flares or by through bomb blast or some explosives and we are mainly introducing the salts in the atmosphere and this salts which mainly grow in size and water joins with them and finally that will lead to rainfall so this is the first method that is hygroscopic cloud seeding and second one is static cloud seeding so in this static cloud seeding we are mainly spraying or spreading a chemical like silver iodide into clouds so this silver iodide which mainly provides a crystal around which moisture will condense such that it will be forming good cloud and finally it will leads to rainfall and third one is dynamic cloud seeding so in this dynamic cloud seeding we are mainly aiming to boost vertical air currents so whenever this vertical air currents are there so whenever this warm air which is mainly moving upside along with the water vapor that is present in that area then only we can say condensation will be happen and the clouds will be formed right so here in this in this dynamic cloud seeding we are focusing on this vertical air currents so here in this vertical air currents which mainly encourages more water to pass through the clouds and that will lead to rainfall so these are the three methods the first one is hygroscopic cloud seeding and second one is static cloud seeding and third one is dynamic cloud seeding so if you talking about here the second one that is static cloud seeding so as i said we are mainly going for spraying of the silver iodide right so silver iodide which is mainly released by a plane or a ground based generator okay so after that what happens silver iodide which particles which mainly reach this targeted cloud so silver iodide which mainly helps for the formation of this ice crystals and now after some time okay so this cloud will be becoming very heavy such that what happen that will leads to the rainfall in this region so this is the mechanism how this cloud seeding mainly works so now let us try to talk about what are the applications of this cloud seeding so first one is it mainly help for agriculture because we are mainly creating rainfall here especially some areas they are drought okay drought areas will be there so in that drought areas whenever you are going for rainfall means it will be helpful for agriculture and that will increase our agriculture production so actually karnataka government which came up with this project to varshadari in 2017 it is mainly focusing on this cloud seeding and second one is power generation so cloud seeding experiments which also helpful in the production of hydroelectricity as well so this is the thing which is mainly following by tasmania australia from last 40 years onwards and this one is water pollution control so cloud seeding also helps to maintain maintain minimum summer flow of the rivers such that it will helpful to dilute the impact of treated waste water discharges from municipalities and as well as industries so especially in the summer season what happen the water flow in the rivers will be very low so even whenever we are discharging little amount of this treated waste water or waste discharge from these municipalities and industries into this rivers means so already the water flow it is very low in this river so we can see there will be high water pollution right so whenever we are adding some water means we can go for dilution right 
so this cloud seeding will be also helpful for water pollution control in the summer in rivers and next one is it will be also helpful for fog dispersal hail suppression and even cyclone modification especially us in 1962 it mainly came with a project the name of that project is project sky water okay project sky water in 1962 and this project which is mainly focusing on weather modification and this weather modification can be done through this cloud seeding method and they are mainly aiming at fog dispersal hail suppression and even cyclone modification and even during the winter this cloud seeding which is mainly used to maintain the proper snow cover on this mountains as well okay so this is about applications of this cloud seeding and even we can talk about uh, tackling of air pollution and even tourism so in these areas also this cloud seeding is very helpful so if you're talking about air pollution cloud seeding can be potentially used to settle down this toxic air pollutants through rain so whenever the rain which is happening so whenever the rain is happening so that water droplets that will also bring down some pollutants which are present in our air right so recently this central pollution control board cpcb on and even other researchers they are mainly focusing to use this cloud seeding especially to tackle this delhi pollution during winter and next one is it also helpful for boosting of tourism so cloud seeding can transform typically dry areas much more hospitable and even that will helpful for enhancing of this tourism as well and if you are focusing on what are the challenges regarding this cloud seeding so first one is it is having some potential side effects because we are using chemicals like dry ice and even sodium uh, silver iodide right so because of this chemicals that we are using in this cloud seeding that might be having some harmful effects especially on plants animals humans environment as a whole okay so this is one important cause of concern and this one is it will also lead to abnormal weather patterns right so it might ultimately change this climatic patterns on the planet as well so places that normally receive this rainfall they might start experiencing the drought because artificially we are mainly producing rainfall in other drought prone areas so normally the areas which used to receive rainfall they might not receive the rainfall because of this artificial seeding or cloud seeding and this one is also very much expensive because when we want to deliver these chemicals into sky we need to use some technology especially we can use some planes or some uh, some important uh, equipment that we can use here so it mainly involves some huge cost and as well as logistic preparation is very much needed so it might be expensive and next important cause of concern is it will also lead to pollution because whenever we are creating this artificial rainfalls then we are using some seeding agents like silver iodide dry ice salts etc so actually whenever this residual silver which may be discovered in the places near this cloud seeding project it is also considered to be as toxic okay so whenever we are using the silver iodide and we want to create rainfall whenever with this rainfall the silver iodide will be also coming down and settling on the ground so it will become toxic right and for dry ice also it can be a source of greenhouse gas and further it will contribute for this global warming because it is basically carbon dioxide okay so these are the some important cause of concern regarding this cloud seeding so in this lecture we said about clouds how they formed and what are the factor responsible for the formation of the clouds and we discussed about different types of clouds so wherever it is necessary please try to make the diagrams and i also discussed about this cloud seeding so by this i completed this topic and next lecture we are going to study about air masses and fronts okay so by this i'm concluding thank you so much